Hi, how are you, Joe? I'm wonderful. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Where are you located? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Okay. The home of, uh, it's grown quite a bit there, huh? Yes. Crazy. Yes. Especially <laughs> in the last couple of years. It seems like it's like, I mean, there's always the one city that everybody flocks to. You know, yeah. we have the Seattle migration, of course, Southern California, but it seems like Austin is the place. I mean, Joe Rogan's made a big deal about it because he left L.A. and all of that. So, yes, yes, yeah. he has. Um, yeah. And he's very involved here. I I hear you can't even get near that comedy club. The the line, the the waiting list is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> have you been there? No, not yet. And okay. I want to go um, okay. because I'm I'm intrigued to see. I've heard the acts have been great. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I I follow it on Instagram and it's like there's always some kind of huge celebration going on every night. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm coming from Kansas City. So we've been you know, we got Patrick Mahomes. So we got a little bit to celebrate. I love Kansas City. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. So. Oh, cool. OK. Right on. Yeah. St. Louis is uh, it's always a good place to sneak off to. You know, yeah. I don't know how you. And Kansas okay. City as well. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's a nice little cross-state siesta, so yeah. it's a good thing. The one thing that bothers me about Kansas City is that one of my bad or good habits is I love White Castle. We have none here. So You're I have No, we have none. And I've reached <laughs> out to them, and I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, we've been there a few times. It's failed. We're never going to do it again. So I keep thinking in the back of my mind, if I'm that guy that goes rogue and opens that one... It could be such a sensation because people will love be it. Rich, yes, 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 yes. I don't know how that would happen because you would have to get the blessing of it. But the irony of it is, is the first one opened up in Wichita, which is pretty close to here. Yes, yes. So, I yeah. guess you have to do the frozen until you can That's get to the it. Thing, and I've been doing it my whole life. Been waiting for a long time. That was so, my husband too. <laughs> damn, live! It's crazy. But anytime yeah. I get anywhere near I seventy and I get towards St. Louis, it's yeah. like the the end of the rainbow is right in front of me. There's white castles everywhere. I love it. So <laughs> good thing. Well, it's great to meet you. And I want to begin our conversation here with what we've all lived through for the last three and a half years going through this mm -hmm. pandemic. How did you How did you survive it? And how did it change you? That's a really good question. Um, you know. <laughs> It impacted my whole family. Personally, for me, it really showed me just, um, you know, how fragile our psyches can be, um, the survival mode, the, um, I mean, just to watch everybody deal with it in such a different way in my family alone, um, extended family, um, people that I've worked with. And, and, and to see, you know, also it brought out a lot of controversy, fighting, um, but then a lot of compassion too, that, um, and that's how it affected me was just, it really reinforced this <clears throat> concept of that. I already like, uh, you know, I already was seeing people deal with so many different things in their lives personally before COVID and then COVID hit. And then you're just like, you know, shit gets real sometimes. And I don't even know if I can say that. Sorry. No, um, please but... <laughs> do. You're fine. It's good. And, uh, it's, you know, life happens. And this was just life happening, even amplified. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people have stuff all the time going on in life. And I don't think we talk about it enough. And, and that's the thing that like really drives me. Um, that's the thing that, um, you know, I try to be mindful of with people that work with me is that life happens. We really need to build a culture, a work culture, especially around those factors that life happens and, you know, mental illness happens in all families. Um, there's always something going on. And I mean, it just, I think that we're just not even aware of it enough. Uh, we're starting to be, but um, there's just so many complications. Life's complicated. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I was, I was thinking about this earlier uh, with your podcast because you have so many jazz artists on there. I was so excited, you know, when I saw the name of your podcast, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. I love listening to the people that you're talking with. And part of what I like about jazz is just that 
you know, it's that complexity of sometimes it goes into the dark places of our lives. And sometimes it has that just beautiful joy of our lives. And, um, and, and it takes into account the complexities and the simplicities and, you know, balancing those. And so I'm just like, I'm really thrilled to be here, but um, not to go off on a different tangent here, but that's, you know, life is tough. Sometimes life, yeah. life is really hard and COVID just, you know, just made it even harder. And so I think that, um, it was interesting to watch how it impacted workplaces too. And it just took a total pivot to remote work where that was really rare. And then it became common. And then also, how do you deal with people that are struggling to deal with COVID with kids and, you know, the usual stories we've heard yeah. a thousand stories, but um, it, it's, and then what are we going to keep from that? What are we going to learn from that? Right. I think that's the era we're in now is, um, how do we want things to look now? What are the positives and the negatives from it? Um, and for me, like I'm in, I'm usually in the tech arena, you know, I'm in Austin, Texas, that's um, the main business here. And they're very forward thinking a lot of times with the remote work. Um, but it's interesting to watch like now COVID's still around, you know, it's still hitting people. People are getting sick still almost once a year from COVID. And it's, I think it's going to continue for a while. Yeah. So it's almost like not only are you dealing with your normal colds and flus, but you're going to have COVID and we don't have enough sick time for that, yeah. you know, like, uh, and, and business owners have to kind of be thinking about those things. Human resources have to be thinking about these things now. And, um, it's, it's interesting to watch this evolution and, and to see the questions that we need to be asking right now and, and be understanding about. You know, it's interesting with jazz. I when I talked to all of the artists and I ramped up a lot of my interviews during 2020 that of all of the artists out there, they were the best equipped to deal with something that was unexpected mm -hmm. like COVID. They're always thrown into the unknown. Mm -hmm. They have to make something beautiful out of it. You know, mm -hmm. they have no idea. And it's only going to happen that one time and it's going to change like COVID yeah. changed and had variants. So I, I think one of the most profound things that I heard from any of the musicians over that time in light of George Floyd, the class and the racial and mm -hmm. all of these things that happened was that, and he was living in Germany. He was an American living in Germany. And he said, from my perspective, the car was already teetering on the edge of the cliff. Mm -hmm. So you throw a pandemic into it and you lock people up and you take away their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to blow up. And, mm -hmm. and that's what we did. And I think we're all still in PTSD. I think it's yes. going to take a long time for the, for the camera to come back to be yeah. in a macro, you know, to be yeah. like, oh, okay, I see now, you know, we're yeah. just still on that blade of grass with the water. We have to come back a lot mm -hmm. farther. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there. But, you know, you would mention, you know, running a business and, and, and mm -hmm. it's one thing to see what you do on paper, but let's get to the brass tacks. I'm going to put you mm -hmm. in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. One <laughs> of the kids looks up and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? You know, that's actually a really tricky question because, um, you know, now I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I've yeah. got two companies and, you know, I say I'm a business owner, but, you know, to a third year old or a third grader, you know, what that, what does right. that mean? You know, and uh, so it, it's, it is difficult. Um, in the past, it was like, oh, I'm a, you know, I run recruiting for a company or I run human resources for a company. But it, again, what is human resources, you know? <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so it's it's difficult to explain. Um, I would just say I'm a business owner, and um, you know, I I help people find jobs and um, help companies um, run their businesses better. So, what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? Uh, you know, this is funny. Um, even younger than that, in kindergarten, I um, we had a cul de sac, and I was the one that was who would be the cop that was directing traffic of all the kids on the bicycles. Um, so I was kind of like the the traffic director and I, I thought that was so cool. And yeah. then, um, and then I had these images of like, I wanted to be in a suit in a, in a boardroom, which I had never been in, you know, that environment before I, I'd seen my, you know, my dad in a suit before. So maybe that's where that kind of came from, but it was like, um, I didn't know exactly what that meant, uh, but it was like I wanted to build something. I wanted to run and and build something. Um, and and it's funny. It took me until I was forty five before I really leaned into that. Um, yeah. And 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 what that was like, I, it just baffles me how long that that took. I was I was always going to have my trajectory and my job, my career. You know, I was going to move up the ladder and 
follow the rules kind of thing. That's not the way I was like that. I was always rebellious. I was always, you know, well, let's think about this differently. Let's go outside of the box. Why do that doesn't make sense, you know? And, um, and then eventually I realized like, oh, maybe I'll try to start, you know, something here. And, and then it just kind of kept going, kept going, kept expanding. And then, you know, six years later, seven years later, I'm, you know, working on a second business and, um, it's, uh, in, in a lot of both businesses or they are, you know, business oriented, like they're helping businesses thrive, but internally in our company, we're very flexible. Um, we've got a lot of working moms, um, and, you know, recruiting is really great to provide a lot of flexibility for people. And then in the second business, um, my partner and I are, um, creating this online environment to provide resources for human resource professionals. It sounds really boring, but part of our thing is that we watched a lot of human resource professionals get burnt out during COVID and they had to juggle so many new, um, you know, hiccups and policies and, you know, just where are they supposed to go next? Where are they supposed to find information? How are they supposed to support their employees? Um, you know, are they going to be remote? New policies around that? Are they, you know, going to be, um, uh, you know, supporting something, not supporting, but like it just kept changing so quickly. Um, and you had to be, you had to improvise, you know, yeah. half the time as to your point earlier. And it was amazing that a lot of HR professionals started leaving or becoming consultants because they just needed a break. And um, so we created this online environment that's supposed to be easy to get resources, but also a human component of supporting people um, and, you know, helping them have more self-awareness, take care of themselves better, um, and uh, really watch their mental health. So you've mentioned music and loving music. What was the first concert you ever saw? The first one that ever blew you away? <laughs> well, I've been to several concerts. A lot of them have blown me away. I right. love all kinds of music. Um, the uh, you know, I think my first one, though, was uh, Ario Speedwagon. That's really oh, dating yeah. me. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, a Sting concert was amazing. Wow, um, Sting would be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... I think let's say go, go girls. And, um, Oh, those are some of my earlier ones. Like yeah. when I was in high school and we didn't go to that many, you know, then right. and that was a big deal to go to three. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But those are, those are some great ones. I mean, I was, you know, I'm a, I, you know, graduated in 88. And so the eighties, that's like where just some amazing music just yeah. really started to grow and blossom. Somebody told me yesterday, they got to see you two do Joshua tree. And that would have been <laughs> crazy. Cool. Yes. So yeah. they have this thing in Vegas now. Have you heard about this called the Sphere? No. I oh, know. it's crazy. Like the outside of it is like this like rotating image of like a smiley face and different emojis. And on the inside, there's this amazing roof. And you two played there and they had this. It's going viral now. You should look it up. And it's okay. the whole roof, the whole ceiling turns into visuals. And you can even see the band looking up like, whoa, like going along with the music. So they're playing like one or whatever one of their songs they're playing that's a hit. And mm -hmm. all of these images are coming up and everybody's just freaked out. Like, wow. So the technology behind that, that's incredible. Yeah. The, wow. the, it's the ultimate merging of live music with mm -hmm. entertainment, which is what they've yeah. been trying to do with sports for a long time. Like right, all right. of the worlds, you know, the, yeah. the almond joy of the entertainment world, so to speak, you know. Yeah. So fascinating. I will look that up. That sounds yeah. so intriguing. Yeah, totally. It's cool. So let me ask you this. Who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh, <laughs> again, so many good people out there. Um, you know, like there's this, uh, you know, of course my parents always, um, and, and I will say this too, like, you know, we had a lot of dysfunction in our family, but you know, they, they watching them, you know, go through their own personal journeys and, um, never stopping, you know, like they're, they're always, they, my dad passed away when I was younger, but they're always, um, you know, moving forward. And that was pretty cool to grow up watching that in spite of all the negative things too. Yeah. So if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now, who would it be? Who would you love to talk to? Oh, Maya Angelou. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I heard a story years ago and I've always tried to find if it's true and i think i kind of loosely did somebody broke into her house at one point and had her yeah, i know that story yeah 
Yes. And she just looked up and said, son, do you want to do this? Is this what you want to do? And, yeah. the, and they they left the house. Okay, I'm glad we corroborated on it. Because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist, so I have to have two sources. I have to like... No, make... no. Yeah, she pulled a gun from her uh, side table yeah. that she had a little a little handgun, I think, and it had pointed at them and like, do you want to be known as... Because like she had them basically like, uh, do you want me to... You want to stay here and be arrested or do you want to start your life over and, you know, like have your family known your legacy is that, you know, you were somebody that broke into where you were a robber. Yeah. And I mean, just like, she's so brilliant. Like, yeah, just, yeah. She's wonderful. Yeah. So let me ask you this as someone that's naturally curious, if you could see any event that's happened in human history with your own eyes, what would mm. you love to have been at to see? <laughs> well, it's more of an era than an event. I think um, sure. the the Renaissance. I mean, I just so many inventions, the, such yeah. a transformation, and so much beautiful art, and um, I, that I think would be a cool era to be in. But then, but then I always laugh too because I'm like, I would never survive. You know, thirty minutes there because yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I don't think they had toilets then, did they? <laughs> yeah, they didn't have anything. They didn't have microwaves. Right. They didn't have the internet. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know. It's funny. I remember going to see the Sistine Chapel and mm -hmm. the Vatican's an amazing place. And when you walk to the Sistine Chapel, it takes forever. And the whole yeah. way there, you see all these amazing ornate rooms of paintings from the Renaissance era. So whenever I hear the word Renaissance, it just captivates me because I could have spent weeks on yeah. the way there. Yeah. And then all everybody, anybody wants to do is see the Sistine Chapel. And then yeah. you get this room and it's packed and it's heavy and, it's and, way and they're up rushing there. you through like they're like get, yes. get through get through and, yes and you're like i just want to sit here all day please yeah. Yeah. i know it's it's wild how it worked um so i'm curious with your work what motivates you every day what gets you out of bed what gets you to want to accomplish your goals and to get things done yeah i think over the last especially over the last even three years um recently uh i've I'm just so motivated by the every day I lean into the things that spark me or the joys in life. <clears throat> like my world just expands. It's crazy. Whereas I, I grew up in a very scarcity mindset. My mom was, you know, a single mom who was a school teacher and <clears throat> really trying to, you know, scrape by a lot of times. And, and I just kind of carried that through. And I think that's kind of in our culture too, a lot is just that scarcity mindset, being careful. Um, and, and, you know, in my fifties now, I'm just like, I'm starting to give myself permission to really lean into those things that I like and enjoy or curious about and wanting to explore. And then I see these talents that emerge or these new things that I'm like, oh, I can do that. I have no idea. Like, and it's just, it's so fascinating and fun. And I never want to get off this right. I mean, it's just, life is just incredible. I mean, the ups and the downs, all of it. Um, it there's so many times that I could have just been like, oh, it's too much. I give up, you know, and yeah. just got to put that tiny foot forward at some point again. Yep. And just, yep. it keeps going. It's amazing how it can change and shift. And yep. um, it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. The wonderment. So of all of the things that you've done professionally, what's your best success story? One that always puts a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, when I worked in a lot of tech companies, I saw that there was just a ton of turnover. People were kind of factory workers in the companies. Um, and, and, and I, and I remember thinking there's gotta be a way that you can make a profitable company and still like have a really great balance for your employees and yeah. still make, you know, a, a, a caring world with your employees and not just kind of use and abuse them. I mean, you need to run a business still. I mean, that, that's a reality, but, um, and so, you know, we've managed to still do that. Like my company is still alive. It's still profitable. We still have a lot of flexibility. I'm hoping I can continue to scale that. I'm working really hard on that. But just when something happens to somebody and I hear a story from one of my employees, one of them had to deal with cancer. Another one had to um, just lost a parent. Another one, you know, had a miscarriage. My team is small. My team is like, you know, 15 people. And those three things in the last year alone. And to say, sure, you take the time you need. You let me know when you're good to go. Like, um, you know, or let me know if it's hitting hard, you know, a couple of days later when you don't expect it to kind of thing. Like just having those real conversations. That's what I, that's what I think is awesome. 
you know, all these companies always say they're family first. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's like, yeah, but yeah. how many are really putting the proof in the pudding? You know, right. That's right, the key. Right, right. I remember seeing a 60 minute special one time on Google, like what they did there. It's like a playland. They had like a mm -hmm. bar and yeah. they had yeah. all, the, you know, they, yeah. just the whole thing was this fantastic thing. It's like, how do you guys even get anything done? Right, you know? right. It's just like, what are you doing? I'm going into work to play. That's it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Weird. So let me ask you this. If you ran into a 20 year old version of yourself in a dream mm -hmm. tonight, you could give that version of you a piece of advice based mm -hmm. on the wisdom you've gained, the life you've led, mm -hmm. the things you've overcome. What what advice would you give your younger self? I would tell myself to, you know, uh, don't be so worried and don't be so afraid. Keep going. And um, the journey is going to be amazing, even when you think it's the lowest blow. Um, it'll turn on you. So hang in there. So what are you the proudest of? Of everything you've done in this life, what are you the proudest of? Uh, I think, you know, raising two kids. I think yeah. that's the, um, you know, the the big one. That's that's a way complicated job. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, two human beings that aren't necessarily like you. And right. you've got to figure out how to help them be themselves. And um, yeah, and it's, it's an ongoing journey. I mean, it's, but... So it's taught me so much. I mean, yeah. so much. It's amazing. Yeah, do you absolutely. Have kids? Yeah, I do. I have uh, I have a stepdaughter and, and a son. My son's on the spectrum. So mm -hmm. when I think about COVID, yeah, I, oh. I've spent my whole life pivoting. So yes. it's yes. like, you know, there's certain people out there that have situations where, you know, when things like that arise. The thing that was weird about that was is that before COVID happened around February or January, I reconnected with an old friend and and we were talking and he said, I got a note from our school district that the kids should get prepared to just take their computer home at any point and stay home. And I was in such denial. I was like, nope, that didn't happen. That conversation, <laughs> it was just a figment. It was the twilight zone that I fell asleep and listened to. It didn't happen. Right. So right. <laughs> it ended up happening. And my son's a huge baseball fan. So spring training was happening. So I was like, he school's his favorite thing, and so is baseball. So when that happened, that was kind of the precursor to everything. But I will tell you, one of the beauties of it was that I interviewed more musicians than ever, mm -hmm. and I would play the interviews on speaker, and my kids, when we would drive around just to get out of the house, they yeah. would listen to these musicians, and the musicians overwhelmingly were positive and yeah. upbeat in their own way. I mean, they weren't like, yeah. you know, lollipops yeah. and birds right. flying around. It, it was right. just, there was a, there was a, virility there was a strength yeah. that came out of them that was natural and mm -hmm. when you hear that during a time that we live through it just lifts you up just mm -hmm. naturally so yeah i think that there was like you know there wasn't room in our society for people to have you know to be able to figure out how to deal with what they needed to deal with in their own way because of those you know situations where you don't know what somebody's dealing with in their home. You don't know how challenging it is to have somebody, you know, to have a kid on the spectrum and you're, you know, locked in or what, like you got to figure out ways to make it work, um, which, you know, I think jazz musicians are way more flexible, you know, with that and, and can, can do those things. But yeah, that's, but I don't think we talked about that enough either, you know, that it's, there is no one right way ever, you yeah. know, there's multitudes of ways and yeah, you have to be creative. But it was just like you said, we're all living through all of this. We're all like living through the holy shit narrative. And then right. we look up and there's this piano that's like coming down off a string. And we're like, oh, my God, I got to get out of the way fast, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just the way it was. So but it had a monopoly on us. And I think I kept mm -hmm. thinking there's all these vignettes of things that I was thinking about at the time. And I just kept thinking this is the only option right now. So we better make this the best we can, you know. Right. But there just were so many scenarios that went into it. But I will tell you, overwhelmingly, from everybody that I interview, there is more positive than there was negative. People are like, mm -hmm. oh, this was the time. There was so yes. many good things. So yeah. I, re I remember my my son's name was Miles. And I always do a year-end podcast with him. And we just mess around. I have the phone. I'm like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. And just pedestrian questions. And I remember mm -hmm. asking him at the end of that year, what do you think? And he was like, good. I, and he went through everything and I'm like, mm -hmm. man, this is somebody that just went through a pandemic and yeah. all these things that just went away. Cause it wasn't one thing or two things or three things. Right. It was everything was yes. altered and yes. he was overwhelmingly positive. 
And I think that the youth have a level of resilience. And I think mm-hmm. maybe that taught them a little bit about being resilient and rolling with it. If it, it did a hundred percent. I mean, it, like my daughter who is, you know, likes to be structured, likes to, you know, know what's coming, does not like change. And she, you know, has realized that she can, she can shift at any time and she can make it work for her even better. Like it's just part of the road she's traveling. And, and she did like, she did amazing things to make up for lost time. And, you know, I think some people it's easier for, for than others, depending on what they experienced in it. But yeah, yeah it's, um, there were, there are some great things that have come out of it too, for yeah. sure. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you. You have different lights of people in their life, family, friends, clients, colleagues, employees, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Therapy hour. Therapy hour. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, I'm I'm the caretaker. I don't know. It's a <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm the caretaker, but I also, you know, I think people uh, they they like to sit with me and talk with me because I can be authentic. I mean, that's like, um, you know, I can go to those dark dark things and I can go to those really happy things, mm-hmm. and um, and it's genuine. Like I've, I've had that whole array of things in my life. So, but yeah, so I guess that kind of puts me in a caretaker position then. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so if anyone wants to reach out to you, learn more about you, anything about oh, your yeah. world, where do they go? Absolutely. Yes. They just go to info at intagconsulting.com. And that's my last name. I'm Teresa Intag. Um, and yeah, and I have an unusual spelling in my first name, so you can call me whatever you want, but it's really just Teresa. <laughs> okay. I, w- I was curious about that. Teresa, yeah. This has been wonderful. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for your story. Thank but you. It is such a great joy to meet you. It was. It's wonderful. Thank you and best of luck. Send my love to Austin. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Kansas Take care. City. <laughs> Bye-bye.